Hey everyone, welcome back to She Tried It. If you're new to my channel, I've completed over 70 knit and crochet patterns by various designers and designed 10 crochet patterns of my own with one new kit that's available right now if you like the sweater I'm wearing. Whether you're a seasoned crafter looking to share your designs or a beginner wanting to document your creations, this video is for you. I'm gonna be sharing all the components I include in my pattern writing. Honestly, I wish I had these tips before I wrote my first pattern. First things first, why is pattern writing so important? Clear and well-written patterns not only help you replicate your projects, but also allow others to recreate your beautiful designs. Let me be the first to inform you, you do not need to be a crafting expert to write a pattern. Maybe you wanna pass along instructions for your make to your children, or maybe you had an amazing design idea and you wanna share it with the world. Go ahead and write the pattern. Since I've completed so many purchase patterns and designed a few of my own, I'd like to think that I've learned a thing or two about what works and what doesn't when it comes to pattern writing. Allow me to share with you what I think are essential elements of any pattern. Some are optional and I'll note that, but I think all should be considered. Component number one, a name. A good pattern name is essential. I try to give my patterns a catchy name that either means something to me or to the design. For example, anyone that knows me knows that I love Michael Jackson. So when I designed a bucket hat that used black or white yarn as the accent color, it just made sense to give a nod to one of Michael Jackson's hits, hence the black or white Bucket hat. A catchy name is definitely not required for a good pattern, but I think a meaningful name is a great way to show your personality to other makers. Component number two, pictures. Again, super important and often overlooked. When I say pictures, I don't necessarily mean step-by-step -step photos, but you can include that if you like, but more so various views of the completed make in action. It gives the maker confidence in knowing that this picture looks good from all angles. Personally, I found that sometimes a variety of pictures can make up for a poorly written pattern. Emphasis on the sometimes. Just have fun with your completed make and show off all the different ways that it can be used or styled. Component number three, level of difficulty. Personally, I think that this information should be available before a crafter purchases a pattern. Consider adding this whenever you decide to list your pattern. Seeing as how most patterns are non-refundable, avoid just saying the pattern is easy. Explain why you classify the pattern that way. One thing I've learned is that my easy is not always another designer's easy, especially when it comes to knitting. Component number four, yarn. Of course, you want to share the yarn you use to complete the pattern, but if possible, provide alternative yarns as well. Perhaps an option for the economical crafter and one for the luxury crafter. Don't forget to include the yardage needed for each make. And most importantly, clearly describe the yarn weight used. Don't just say any worsted weight yarn can be used because most of the time that's a lie. Provide a yardage per gram so that any crafter can find a similar yarn that's accessible to them. Component number five, sizing. If you're a member of the size inclusivity game, like myself, be sure to include a clear definition of all sizes included in the pattern with measurement. Again, a medium to one designer is not the same measurement as a medium for another designer. Give specific measurements for each size to ensure an accurate fit. Component number six, gauge. Depending on the make, it's important to share your gauge. When it comes to gauge, be sure to define one, the size of the gauge swatch. While four inches by four inches is the most common, other sizes can definitely be used. Just be sure to specify. Number two, the stitch use. If a pattern has multiple stitches, be sure to state which stitch is being used in the gauge swatch. Number three, the tool size used. Don't forget to share what size hook or needle you use to get gauge. And number four, blocked or unblocked. This is often overlooked, but be sure to clarify if the gauge swatch used is blocked or not blocked. If you really want to be fancy, give gauges for both. Component number seven, terminology. This really only applies to crochet, but it's imperative that you indicate whether UK or US terms are being used in the pattern and be consistent with whatever you choose. I think most crocheters have horror stories about either starting or completing a project not knowing the correct terminology used in a pattern. Component number eight, disclaimer. This is an example of a disclaimer I used in my half wrap fall shawl pattern. It's basically a statement about affiliate links being used in the pattern, indicating your pattern cannot be used for mass production, requesting others not share your pattern with anyone, and requiring you to be credited as the designer for any photos of completed makes. While it's important important to add a disclaimer, it never seems to stop large fast fashion companies from mass producing products while giving designers no credit or commission for their work. But you know what? That's a whole nother video for a whole nother day. Component number nine, materials. Most patterns include basic materials such as yarn, needles, hooks, and notions, but others are a bit more out of the box. For example, with my polychrome shoulder bag, I linked to the exact beads and shoulder strap that I used so that my make could be replicated exactly. If your design is a bit more out of the box, be sure to 
include links to all the materials needed. And try your best to stay up to date with your materials because items get sold out and yarn gets discontinued all the time. Component number 10, design concept. Some designs hop straight into the written pattern with no explanation and I don't really like that. I like knowing exactly what I'm getting into before I get into it. So I try to give the same courtesy to makers that purchase my patterns. For all of my patterns, I try to include a design concept page like this. In my black or white bucket hat pattern, I explain that there are three sections, the top of the hat, the side of the hat, and the brim. That way, once we get into the written pattern, the maker knows exactly what each section means, and if they want to adjust any section, they can. Component number 11, abbreviations. Whether it's knit or crochet, make sure you define every single abbreviation that you use. And remember, you don't have to use any abbreviations if you don't want to. A list of the most common knit and crochet abbreviations can be found on the Craft Yarn Council website, and I'll be sure to link that in the description box below. Component number 12, the written pattern. This section is obviously completed specifically based on what you're designing. My typical process is taking really good notes when completing the project and writing a draft pattern based on that, and then trying to complete a second version of the project, even if it's a small sample, following the draft pattern that I've written. Little things like working stitches in the back loop and the number of turning chains can often be overlooked. Just remember, what may be obvious to you might not be obvious to someone else, so clarity is key. It's so much better to over explain than under explain. Also remember, formatting matters. Use headings, bullet points, and numbering to make your pattern easy to follow. As a supplement to my written pattern, I encourage adding in one or both of the next two components. Component number 13, video tutorials. You don't have to be a video editor to make a video tutorial. Don't overcomplicate this. A video tutorial can be as simple as a quick silent video showing a stick or as elaborate as what I did for my rocking around the Christmas tree garland pattern where I fully make the exact same thing. And realize that YouTube allows you the options of uploading videos privately where only you can see them or unlisted where only those you share the video link with can see it. Meaning an unlisted video is not searchable. Every video tutorial you make does not need to be openly shared with the world. Component number 14, schematic or chart. I don't know if it's the engineer in me or what, but I love including a schematic in my patterns. In my fearless knit beanie pattern, which is free by the way, I provide an image for how to cast on. As they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. So clarify as much as possible in the written pattern and throw in a schematic or chart for good measure and ultimate clarity. Component number 15, contact info. Whether a person needs help or just wants to show off how great their finished piece turned out, I think it's always a great idea to include your contact information. This provides new makers with confidence that they're not going through the pattern alone. And who doesn't appreciate that? Component number 16, styling tips. While not super common, I love when designers either show variations of the same pattern or show how a pattern can be styled in different ways. I did this with my Packlight phone case bag where I made three different versions of it, styled them all in a YouTube video, and linked that video in the pattern. Component number 17, care instructions. This may not always be possible, especially if various fibers can be used for the pattern, but I think it's a nice touch when a designer lets me know how I can care for my completed make. Here's an example of the care instructions I provided for the half wrap fall shawl. Nothing too fancy, and it typically just matches the care instructions found in the yarn label. But again, I think it's a really nice touch. Component number 18, commissions. This is something unique to me that really hasn't gotten going yet. But the concept is basically allowing people who have purchased and made my pattern to make my pattern for others that are not knitters or crocheters. Crafters do this all the time, but you typically have to search for them. I thought I could make life easier by providing a landing page with contact information for crafters that are willing to do commissions. Again, no movement on this idea yet, but remember you heard it here first because a large designer may very well take this idea and run with it. And honestly, that's fine because I think this is a great idea. Component number 19, thank you. To me, this is the most important part. One thing my mom always told me is people don't have to be nice to you. If you're selling or giving away a pattern, it is so important to take the time to thank the maker that recreates your design. Component number 20, other patterns. Last but certainly not least is to show off your other designs. When I have a free download such as the Thick and Quick Coasters, I I try to provide links to my other designs. Most likely that crafter was trying to just get their free gift and get out. And I don't blame them. My hope is that after seeing the clarity, detail, and time I put into my patterns, that they want more. Once your pattern is polished, it's time to share it with the world. Consider posting your pattern on platforms like Ravelry, Etsy, or your own blog for publishing. Engage with the crafting community, get feedback, and enjoy seeing your designs brought to life. One thing you might be surprised that I didn't mention in this video is pattern testing. Of course, I think it's great 
great to enlist the help of fellow crafters to ensure that your instructions make sense and your project turns out as expected, but the average person, including myself, doesn't have access to that kind of network. And after hearing the arguments against pattern testing, I sometimes wonder if it's a form of exploitation. But that's a whole nother video. I already discussed my pros and cons of pattern testing. I know feedback on patterns is invaluable, however, I'm not convinced that it needs to be in the form of pattern testing. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. There it is, a guide to writing crochet and knit patterns. I hope you found these tips to be helpful in your pattern writing journey. All in all, a good pattern is basically a roadmap guiding crafters through every step of their creative journey. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more crafting content, and let me know if there are any pattern components that I missed. If seeing all these components of a pattern make you think, this is way too much, but you still want to make money with your craft, check out this video where I share 11 other things you can do to make money with knit and crochet. Until next time, happy pattern writing and see you in my next video. Bye!